The Nintendo Shack is back. Welcome to another episode of PSVG's Nintendo Shack. Of course, a proud member of the PSVG Podcast Network. And, hey, we're part of that little darling community on the internet of Make Us Better. I am Jason. Yes, Jason Lacey. I'm here once again, helming the shack with me, the master of puppets himself, Donnie Reese. Greetings, Kooplings. Hi, Jason. Hey, Donnie. Welcome back to the show you host. (laughs) <laughs> when i when i feel like it right i've no, missed it, you buddy here's the thing it's this is a funny timing because now everyone's going to be like it's just coincidence that my episode of radio is lame went out this week yeah i'm talking about being you're not burnout but over committing and over stretching and then i like wasn't on if we were in nintendo for two weeks i wasn't Jason, on check <laughs> would you say that you crunch like are you doing like weekly crunch like it's just bad like rock star bad <laughs> Yeah, I'm waiting for that sweet commission, uh, that sweet uh, bonus to come in at the end of the year. Completely unrelated to Nintendo Shack and what we're going to talk about, but is there any part of you that thinks it's just a little bit funny that everybody's whining about how much employees worked at Rockstar and Crunch and whether or not it did or did not happen, but in the exact same like two or three days, everybody's upset that Bethesda released a letter talking about how broken their game is going to be and how everybody's like, they rushed it. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just wondering if anybody's caught on to that at all. Like, I'm not saying that I'm for crunch or against crunch, or whatever, you know, obviously we'd like everybody to work 40 hours a week until it's done. I just think there's yeah. just a little interesting. There's something there between those two things. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, there is. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't really weighed in on that whole subject, but how, how awesome was that Jason Schreier article about, Rockstar, like that one with all the inter- with the interviews, and then I tried to read the whole thing. I think oh, I got I did. through I... the first three or four paragraphs. Was it amazing? I don't know if it's amazing, but I, it just impresses me. Like I know people, I know you you always speak about it a lot, but I mean everything. I, like when he does those like deep dive research, oh, like yeah. articles. That's that's it's just like I don't see that anywhere else on online. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, I do like the access that he got. I was listening to his podcast because I do like his podcast quite a bit. Um, I was listening to a podcast today where he's talking about like the weird scenario that they brought him in to do interviews with the rock star folks. Yeah, he's like, it's totally the HR weird. guys there, and then yeah. I mean, I don't <laughs> like it could have been will. a play because they just like video conference in. They yeah. could have been actors and stuff. Like he has no idea. Yeah, I mean, and the thing, the last point I want to make out of before we actually get on topic is like, I agree with what people were outcry and people were like well we got a boycott boycott rockstar but i like the point that he drove home is like no this game needs to sell well so the people that worked on it get a sweet check for the for the game selling you know yeah Uh, yeah i mean that's the thing because they're going to get royalties or something their bonus is going to be based on that game by rockstar making money and i mean if you want to support the developers not buying the game they worked on is not gonna that's not gonna help right Right. that's not gonna help that's gonna get them all fired (laughs) and not rehired you know Yes, hey, yes. Ted's in the chat. We got Devs yes, in the Jeff. chat. Nintendame is in the chat. Missing on the show is my Nintendo's Caroline. She's having internet issues, guys, like a lot. Like yeah. we worked on it for about 30 minutes. We're starting late. Um, we tried to get it. She restarted everything over and over and over again. And we just had to have her bow out. So give her the yeah. night off. Go, go rest like and relax. It's a solid 10 minutes, and then it freezes on her, and then she curses a lot and throws things, and then the cycle repeats. Sure, it's not, it's not healthy for anyone. And we're definitely not the professional podcasts that are running all of our local tracks and running it through filters. I'm ain't got time for that. So, you know, <laughs> we go it, straight. We go straight to tape, straight to live. Yeah, if if, if live ain't gonna work, we need you to sit down for a little bit. <laughs> we'll get that figured out later. Yeah, so we're back. It's like old school Shack. Yeah, it is Shack except, one. So except without Kevin. You want to review right. golf story again? We know we it was brought up in chat today because apparently I get I don't talk about it that much, but Golf Story's a good game. You should probably own it. It's on sale, right? Yeah, yeah, it is on sale. It's like nine eighty six. It's like five dollars off. Donnie, I hear you like that game. I do love that game. I love it quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, I hear that every time we talk about it, I just talk over you. So, oh my God, Golf Story! Jason, do you like Golf Story? I do enjoy Golf Story. The reason that that was on my not my mind is because we just launched PSVG or PSVG's Nintendo Shack podcast feed. So I had to re I had the you know to reload all those episodes, and then as mm. I was going through them all, I was like, oh, Nintendo Shack one is just me and Jason talking about Golf Story. <laughs> 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 that is that is how Nintendo Shack one should be. That's a pretty good intro to Nintendo Shack, I think. Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, Golf Story is a good game. I enjoy Golf Story. You enjoy Golf Story. Everyone enjoys Golf Story. Golf Story. Yeah, but Caroline is in the chat, and story. she says buy the physical version, which I agree. Caroline, while you're in the chat, when when is that coming? I just paid for it. I have no idea when it's going to come. I bought it like a month ago. Is it going to be here Next in like year. 2019 or something? Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know. I can't yeah. answer that for you. We'll it's let her in. We'll let her do that. So, yeah, it feels good to be back. It's been uh, – I've missed a lot of show, a lot of my shows this past couple of weeks. I've it's been a, I had a, a anniversary trip, I had a wet family wedding, so I've been out of town two weekends in a row. Um, so yeah, here we are, back back to the grind, back in the saddle, back to Nintendo Land. I'm good. Hope you guys miss me because I missed all of you. Yeah, we always do, man. And it's good you get some vacation time and get away and all that. Tell me about anniversary it. is a really good reason to to, yeah. to not podcast for a bit. Yeah, right. Big six years. We haven't killed each other yet. That's so. it. Oh, so, Donnie, uh, I'm going to cut this short. We usually like to talk about what we've been playing, and I'll be honest, I haven't been playing anything. I haven't played much of anything since I finished Mega Man 11. Like, I don't want to say, like, I'm at a dry spell for Switch games, but, like, there's just nothing that's, like, I want to get back into. Speaking you know? to you, nothing's grabbing yeah. you. Yeah, like, I, every once in a while, I'll, I'll throw up, if I have some time to kill, I, I've played some Debris Infinity. You know, okay. that's like that. But I think if I want, I think I tried to play Dead Cells one day, and there's like there's two ways, like I have to to play Dead Cells now because I'm like at this at this point where I don't have enough things unlocked where I'm, I think I can like safely be strong enough to make it through like the second boss. So I was like, do I either speed run it to try to get to those unlocked doors where you can get decent payload of the cells? Or do I go meticulously through and kill everything to try to get all the upgrades? And each time I go the speedrun route, and then each time I die stupidly and lose all my progress with like five minutes end and playing, and I'm just like, F this, and I just dashboard it and close the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So shameless plug, since you're not going to be on tomorrow's spooky Hallowcast at PSVG, have you been watching anything? Are you in the, are you in the mood? Are you taking in the festivities? Uh, we watched, my wife and I did watch... Uh, all of the haunting of Hill House on Netflix. Ooh. We like watched that in like three days. Um, so, which is always fun when her and I both really get into a show, and then we'll we'll do sure. that. And I th- I think there's there was like a what was that one movie on Netflix that came out? Uh, I think it just hit earlier in the month, which is uh, kind of creepy themed. It's like this guy has to go rescue his sister from some cult, and it's like in the, set in like the nineteen. 19- I think it's like earlier 1900s i can't remember oh, i can't remember so we're gonna watch that and like i know if we if it was available when we were gone in the one weekend we were gonna go see um we were gonna go see the new halloween film nice um, nice but yeah we watch we watch always watch a few spooky things this time you're like our our tradition for halloween is we give out candy and then we usually throw on like um turner classic or sometimes amc2 and that all the old school films yeah. like they usually have a bunch of vincent price stuff We'll watch or just some random um, old scary movies. I think that was always fun. Like, have you ever seen like the like the original version of the Fall of the House of Usher? Like, no, that is like it's just weird. I have really and you know I never really dive way way back. My wife is always like, let's go watch like the movies from the fifties, and I've tried to watch a couple, and I'm like, no. There's just certain House things of Black, I can't the original go House back of Wax. To. I've seen that one. That yeah. one's good. Okay. Um, so we always do that, but I did actually not Nintendo related. I fired up my stream Monday night because I had some time, and I started playing Dead Space again. And I'm almost done. It's only take. I started this last <laughs> Halloween streaming Dead Space, getting the spirit, and it's taken me a year to finish this game. But I'm finally like halfway through the final chapter. I'm going to finish it this weekend finally, wow. and then maybe start Dead Space too. Maybe, maybe. Congrats. But I I may have a, a assignment to to a man for the shack. So I'm going to do that, and I'm really hopeful there's a code we're hoping to land for another upcoming indie game that I'm really hoping we get. So Before something. you're going to be talking about how you have so many games to play. Like, I have so much stuff to play. Dude, I've still, I've still been, even Caroline kind of inspired me too with her stream. I've been so close to like, you know, I want to play Mario Odyssey, but then like I've taken my Switch to work every day, and it just, I never even get it out of the case. I took it on vacation, didn't get it out of the case. You wow. know, so... I really have been bad lately about taking a lunch break. You know, sometimes you just can't, sometimes you just can't find time, you know, like that's okay. There's other times where like, you know, I feel like there's definitely times where I play so many video games 
for let's say two months in a row where I just hit this thing where I, I don't want to do anymore. You know, it's just like it doesn't matter how yeah. good the game is. Like I need a break. So I feel yeah. You. I I've been watching like some of my own shows and comics. Honestly, that's why I've been filling my time. I've been consuming other media from games. But let's face it, catch up on good, podcasts. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a good thing because November's almost here. We've got Diablo, which I'm. That's going to be my last game before Smash. I am going to. I'm decided. I am going to buy Diablo. I was out of fence because a lot of people weren't getting it, and then I had to make my emo flux tweet like, "Well, not many people are getting Diablo, so I'm going to pass." And then like fifty, not fifty people, but bunch of people were like, oh, I'm getting it. I was like, okay, more people than I thought. So I'm still getting Diablo. And then it's just time about just taking it, taking it easy because in December, I'm done. I'm done. See uh, you guys. See me later. I'm done. We'll just have the smash cast. It's all I'll talk starring about N64 real. Josh and Jason Lacey. Just all smash all the time. And Devin and Devin. Although Devin is not allowed talk switch on any podcast until he plays golf story and breath of the wild. That's the thing. So. so if he talks just Smash, then he's technically not talking Switch. Don't do that. All right, let's not let's not try to poke holes in the theory, okay? <laughs> like we have an agreement. He has to honor his side of the agreement. Well, Jason, um, to make up for for your lack of playing, I have been playing some some Switch of late and some video games. So first and foremost, Caroline and I did almost like an almost four hour stream of Splatoon last yeah. weekend. Yeah. Which was, was really it just fun. you guys that played? I didn't get a chance to watch. I was gonna Nobody try to came. Play. We kept like we we invited maybe in Discord like three or four different times. We tweeted about maybe three or four different times. She tweeted, I tweeted. Not one person joined us. In um in true Chalfie fashion, he tweeted us like multiple times, like, I'm on my way, I'm getting set up and he never showed. This is like this is the the par for the course with this this guy Chalfie. You know, it's the same thing when he invites me to come on a show. It's like, <laughs> hey, can we give props to Shafi? I don't know if you guys, I wasn't able to listen to last week's show. He's the Tecmo Bowl, Tecmo Bowl yeah. champion. Yeah. Yeah, Chelsea less about dry, but yeah, Tecmo champion. That's something to be proud of. They went through the gauntlet, getting through all that, all the tournament, all those weeks, all that. And that's pretty, pretty special. Did you did you and Eric ever do your, your no. bronze match? I don't care enough. He can have it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Nintendo Golf Tournament? Right? Right? That game is hot trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe if they get a better yeah. golf game. Um, but the Splatoon was cool. It was a cool way to get back in. I loved all the Halloween gear. Like, we knew that beforehand, right? Having a Jason mask and Splatfest was awesome. But the Splatfest itself, Jason, was really, really cool. Um, all the levels were redesigned. They had all this, uh, you know, transparent-like paint. Caroline used some big word I'd never heard of before, but... <laughs> She called it something. I was like, I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> and uh, the stream was really cool. We had people stop by the stream at least. So we got to okay. hang out with some people. Um, we got drunk. We made lewd jokes at each other. We just played <laughs> around you, and didn't do much. Do you think like Splatoon is like, I know we always said like Splatfest would be the thing that would always get us back into it, you know, and you've come back and played the past couple, but I feel like most of the people I know, except for one community, it's kind of like everyone's kind of done. I yeah. do. I definitely feel like Splatoon has lost its luster, um, and th- that's okay. Game. That's what games yeah. do. There's nothing. Yeah. That's what games do. I Eventually, mean, you just play so much of it, you just you're just done. Yeah. And t- to be fair, I mean, there's always something good. I feel like coming for people to play. I mean, it, I feel like more now more so than ever, everyone's getting pulled. Especially with like you multi console owners. I mean, what's dropping at midnight that probably everyone's going to be oh, playing? Oh boy. If people, if not everyone was playing Forza, now everyone's going to be playing. Red Dead. I oh, mean, yeah. so well, and I would say even on the even on like the Switch front, you know, Wii U never had Fortnite or Paladins or Warframe. Wii U never really had any alternatives, so yeah. everybody played. Yeah, Black. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, that was if you the wanted to play a shooter. Was shooter. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Now, I mean, Paladin. Paladin is not so much, but Fortnite's such a huge popular thing, and um, that's a good point. So I, I wish like. I think still to this day, on Switch, the most fun I've had is probably with Splatoon, though. That first launch night when we were all in Discord playing together with Bobby. Oh, yeah. oh, that yeah. was that was the most fun I've had on the Switch to date still. Stand down, uh, blue team, as I'm yelling at everybody. Yeah, yeah. 
Jason Lacey lick my oh my god <laughs> best moments ever so I, I'm hoping uh, Smash Bros like recapture that so I'm, sorry, I th- I'm, I'm, I'm hijacking your no 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 it's conversational podcast I and mean, this is what podcasts are for actually this is something I constantly I think I would say critique but Kevin probably think it's nagging I'm constantly telling all the PSVG shows to, to talk to each other quit doing book reports quit reporting out and, and talk to each other let's converse um okay <laughs> so the question really is. When they do Splatoon 3, like, do they need to do something, like, new? If they come out with new content, same formula, do you think there's, like, a diminishing returns? Or, like, do you feel like you need something new from Squid Game? I, you know, I don't... I think we just need... I think they need to open it up a little more. You know, we I continue with, like, the quality of life improvements that we saw. Like, mm-hmm. being able to change gear without having to leave the match. Sure, sure. That was a big thing. But I think... You know, eventually it would be almost nice if we could swap. I don't know if we could swap. I don't know. It'd be nice if you could pick. Maybe not have access to your full loadout, but pick a couple different weapons that you could swap between mid match like and you. respawn. That would be nice. And I think they really needs to have. I think it's time to. We need another mode, but I think it's time to redo the whole way they do the map cycle. I think that being that locked be a in to just a couple maps is just it's. It's, oh, uh, by the I, way, speaking of speaking of I'm Squid Game, on that. I got um, I don't even know the name of the thing anymore. I've, uh, I I played the same map my first sixteen matches uh, on oh, stream. See, like I had to stuff, quit man. the entire game and come back and load everything to get another map. Just I kept happening over and over. I just kept playing the same. It didn't bother me because it looked amazing. But I was just like, after sixteen maps in a row, you're like. Okay, I want to play something else now. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's what's nice about Splatfest is you get three maps because you get the you get the two maps and then you get the Splatfest variant sure. of. And moments. mine wasn't. So that's not, but I just got the same one over and over and over. Yeah. Stream to back it up. You guys can watch it. Just, but I was having so much fun with Caroline and Brian. Didn't I didn't even care. Yeah. You know, um, I mean that's the thing. So I think I Squid know. Game I, needs I, to like party it up a little. I I need like some some fun modes that aren't just so competitive all the time. I would like if they kind of did just a little bit, like add some of the arms approach, like a basketball mode or, you know, something mm. that like I could go for like a rocket league or like a blast ball mode with what about characters, like a, something a like that. a mode that locks you into specific, like it was, it made everyone play with certain weapons and you had certain like objectives that had to be taken on the map. Like, um, I, everyone was forced to use rollers, for example, but you'd have to do, there'd be something yeah, I don't know something, something weird on the map that, that it make it hard. Yeah, yeah, I think something like that is needed. I, I think something, you know, something more casual is needed because, like, I think the game, the long term tail of it is always going to be the super competitive, and it should be. But I think having something more casual, something more party, could just get more people playing it a little more often, and maybe give the game just a little bit more legs. You know, I don't want them to lose that approach. It should be for the competitive players. Just spruce yeah. it up a little. I think you know this is what Nintendo does. I'm actually quite surprised they haven't done it yet, because they seem to do this with almost every franchise they have. I can give you an example of some party casual mode, you know, something or another that they've done before, but we haven't really seen it with Splatoon. Yeah. So, um, either that or use the characters in something else. I wouldn't imagine. I would not be surprised if, like, we got, like, some Smash. Splatoon spinoff. No, I'm talking, like, 2D oh. Splatoon or something like that. I, I wouldn't... Splatoon, Splatoon World. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at that at all. Um, so, Splatoon was great. Hanging out with Caroline is always a blast. Um, before I talk about the game that I really want to talk about, I do have to mention that Caroline and I hooked up and went out on the town... With Brian and one Jacob Rush from oh, yes. Nintendo Nostalgia, who came through Atlanta, by the way. And I don't want to throw him completely under the bus, but let me tell you something. Any listeners out there, if you're coming to visit Atlanta, and let's say you're staying downtown, maybe throw me a DM before you book your room. Or you'll end up like Jacob, where he booked a, a townhome in a neighborhood Jacob should not have booked a townhome. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Like, not not in just, in, let me put it this way, not just a neighborhood you shouldn't book a townhome in, like, the neighborhood you shouldn't book a townhome in. I was like, and there was this one point where I went to go pick him up, and he was like 30 minutes late because the conference ran over, and I was like, seriously, guy, you need to hurry up, because I can't just sit here like this. Like, <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. So that was fun, oh, um, but no. we grabbed him, and uh, we took him down to Little Five Points, which is kind of like this uh, alternative. Oh, yeah, I heard it. Jacob's still alive, right? Yeah, this alternative okay. hipster place. So Jacob is super sweet, almost pure. 
Like, it, definitely by my standards. So we take him to the vortex. A, a, a radiating glow about him? Kind of. Where there's a giant skull that you enter in, and demons painted along the walls with no clothes. <laughs> so it's like we basically took him to the worst restaurant we possibly could Oh, have. my God. <laughs> but uh, the uh, food is great. He admitted the food was amazing. He was and, like, uh, it was okay, though, because one of the burgers was named after Donkey Kong. So it was like, it was the best place ever. And and here's the thing. We just sat there and talked about video games for like an hour and a half. And they played Pokemon Go in just nonstop while they were there talking. It's interesting talking to somebody as they stare at their phone and throw Pokeballs at each other. So that that's the that. that's the second time you've met Jacob, right? Uh, no, no, I've never met Jacob. Oh, I thought he came down. Kevin met Jacob. Kevin went to Iowa or something like that, and they crossed paths at some point. Or oh, Indiana. I thought, I thought he visited. I thought he had been down there. Who else? There's I someone met Nathan. Else. You met Nathan, but I thought you and Caroline met some with someone else before. No, it's not making up stories. Maybe I'm forgetting stories. <laughs> oh yeah, and we got him to drink a Mexican Coke with real sugar in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just completely one of the thick store spies one of the has broke so his diet and all that. So it was <laughs> a blast, man. Get to hang out with our mub club companion and just talk, just shoot the stuff, man. We hung out from I don't know, maybe like six to maybe eleven o'clock. It was a good you four probably, or five you hours. Must, you probably must hold the record now for meeting most of our, our podcast oh, I affiliates. Doubt that. I doubt that. Um I don't know. Maybe. I doubt that. Uh Sean has well, to have I, met I, most I, most people. I've only met Lucas. Oh wait, and Justin. And Justin. There you go. That just, counts. So you've met just as many as I have. They live in the same city as I do. <laughs> um, so I've been playing a lot of Valkyria Chronicles too. Speaking of Justin. I, I enjoy your screenshots because they're always very lewd. So, okay. I'm going to come back to that. Um, J- uh, Justin sent me his copy because he gave it, you know, an early test run and uh, I was going to probably hold out for Black Friday. I definitely was holding out for Black Friday. I was probably going to hold out for Black Friday for um, the Premiere Edition, which got a little tank statue and an art book. And Because um, I've played Valkyria Chronicles before. Um, I'm playing Valkyria Chronicles 4 on the Nintendo Switch. Um, though, Valkyria Chronicles was also ported to the Nintendo Switch and is only $20 in the eShop. So if you're interested in the game, but you want to, you don't want to pay sixty dollars for for Valkyria Chronicles Four, you can totally buy the first one, Valkyria Chronicles, for twenty bucks. I'm totally buying that, like almost as soon as it goes on sale. The moment I can get that for anything less than fifteen, I'm totally picking that up too, because mm. the engine that they use to make Valkyria Chronicles it has like this storybook watercolor type style, like this comic style, and it's gorgeous. It looks beautiful in handheld. Mm. It looks beautiful on TV screen. It always has. It looks just like it did back when I played it on PS3, I think. And um, it still, to this day, looks great. So there's really nothing wrong with that. Um, we got Lucas hot and bothered in the chat. Ooh. Like... <sighs> let's see here. I mean, he's playing Xenoblade still, so I mean, I think he should have his fill of, uh, Sorry, so let's top. talk about that. Let's talk about that. Anime. So the, the, the buzz early with Valkyria Chronicles was, you know, that it was sexist and, and cringy and all that. It's definitely lewd or suggestive. I would say suggestive. Yeah, I think Xenoblade so. is lewd. You know, yeah. there are no characters in this game, or at least that I've encountered yet, that are literally wearing, like, strings... <laughs> and you know, have you know some? They don't look like uh, what's her name from Metal Gear. Uh, yes, Wyatt wasn't that her name? Yes, Pyra and Mithra are uh, some scantily clad, endowed like you know they've got the whole anime trope up to a T. Yeah, these these characters don't have that, but there are you know it's an anime, it's an it's a Jap anime. I don't know really what to say. I don't know like the type of culture, the vocabulary to pull, but like there are, there's moments where a guy slaps a girl on the butt. And uh, she promptly smacks him across the face. <laughs> you know, so, like, there's a moment like that. There's also another moment where a girl walks over a guy, and there's, like, a suggestive dialogue that maybe he saw up her skirt, and she's mm-hmm. very embarrassed in that type of that stuff. That was one of the pictures I saw. <laughs> yeah. So, like, but it's not, like, in your yeah. face. About it. it's, so it's definitely nothing worse than I've seen in a Xenoblade game no. or a Persona game. Honestly, I would even say maybe a Fire Emblem game. Definitely not, like, Grand Theft Auto you know, there's nothing like mature, mature here. So yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But you know, who who am I? Maybe I'm just one of the sexist people that video gamers hate. 
I enjoy it quite a bit. I love it. I think it's funny. I think it's flirty. I think it's tongue in cheek. I think it's, you know, shows a way of, of being flirting with, without, you know, being grotesque or, you know, anything like that perverse. It's definitely not like what I would call perverse. Um, but that aside, um, I guess to, to really sum it up before I break it down, I really love the game, Jason. Valkyria Chronicles oh, well, 4, I plus. really enjoy. If we were to do like our top 25 Switch games right now, Valkyria Whoa. Chronicles 4 would be on that list. Definitely. Uh, definitely. I don't know where I haven't thought about it like that hard or anything like that, but I'm just trying to, if you're looking for a range, this is my top tier upper echelon of Switch games that I've played because it is gorgeous. There's a ton of content, Jason. I've played it for maybe, I think I'm maybe at 10 hours or near 10 hours, I'm nearing that 10 hour mark. I'm only on chapter five. I think there's like 18 chapters or something like that. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of game here. Apparently the story mode takes about 40, 45 hours to beat. Most Mm -hmm. people probably means it'll take me 50, 55 hours to beat. Um, It's a tactics-based RPG. For anybody that's never, has no idea what I'm talking about for all this time, it's a tactics-based RPG. I always equate it to Fire Emblem, but it's very different. So in Fire Emblem, you're on like this 2D map with a bird's eye view. Right, and then you move your little sprite to enter battle with another sprite, and then you get like this cutscene animation. In Valkyria Chronicles, you see the map from above, the same map, like you see this map, you select your unit, and then you go into like a 3D action game where you become okay. the character and you can literally run around the map and shoot people and do whatever you want from that point. So it's like I don't know. It's weird. It's like uh, it's kind of like Fire Emblem from the tactics side, but then like it almost becomes like a Warriors game when you hit the action mode. So if you're uh, if you are personally OP at the running around action side of things, because that may co- overcome for any of your short sightedness in the tactics side. Yes, definitely, most definitely. And that game, that's really kind of what the game is. There's almost like a board game appeal to it, or at least like from the strategy side. So every turn that you have you're allotted like a certain amount of points and you spend a point to move a unit and you control these units. So one at a time, you pick the unit you want to move, you go into the game where you become the person 3d, you run around the map and you can attack. So you can attack once per turn. And there's like this rock, paper, scissors thing where, you know, like you've got scouts that can move fast and identify people, but they're not that strong. You've got lancers that can take out, you know, tanks and they're resistant to, to bombs. Then you've got grenadiers, which are just like beasts, but they can't really go that far. You've got snipers who can shoot very far, but um, only, you know, only once at a time, that type of stuff. There's obstacles in the environment for you to navigate to really a lot of them. I actually really like the map design. The maps are really big, which, so Justin said it was slow. I think that might be because the maps are so big. You may feel that way. Um, because it's okay. not an action game, you know. You're not. It's not Call of Duty or anything. You're not going to run around, you know, blowing stuff up, throwing grenades. It's a. Tur- it's an RPG. It's a turn-based RPG at heart, with like action elements, third-person action elements, like baked into it to make it just a little bit more fun. I think, um, a little more fresh. Definitely a little bit more for me. And um, so from from that angle, I, I like the strategy. I like the tactics. The map design is nice. It has some verticality. You'll get grenadiers on perches that you can only get if you get like a sniper on the other perch. And, you know, you've got to combat tanks and which means you got to flank them. And, um, you know, there are maps where trees fall and bridges get washed away and environmental effects, fog and things like that, that you can do. And every map has, you know, like its own little, its own little quirk. Like there might be a map where you're not supposed to engage the enemy and there might be a map where, um, like there've been maps even through chapter five, I'm all, I've already seen maps where I'm being attacked, attacked on, on multiple ends of the map at once. I'm defending multiple points at one time. It's not like a rush to the middle of the battlefield and kill each other type of thing. Um, I even had to like guard a retreat. So there was that kind of stuff. And then in between these battles, you have these cutscenes. Now they're not like cutscenes. You don't sit back and watch it like Xenoblade. They're yeah. more like Fire Emblem. Like you have these comic strips where the character pops up and you click it. And, you know, they read their voice line and you keep clicking through it. One of the flaws that I think a lot of people might have with that is you can't skip it. You have Mm -hmm. to click through it. So if you're not digging what they're saying at the moment, you can't just jump ahead. You've got to click through it all. And they're sometimes they're pretty lengthy. You get the Xenoblade is you sit there for five, eight, ten minutes clicking through stuff. But like I said, I like it because I think it's a lot of it's funny. It's tongue in cheek. I like the way they're building the cast even so far. Um, one cool thing about this game is there's a lot of characters, way more than I remember being in Valkyria Chronicles one. 
Um, it's been a long time. It's been 10 years since I played Valkyrie Chronicles. Oh, wow. Because yeah. I never played it. Like, there's been a lot of them, but I never bought it on. I never had a PSP. I never had a Vita. So I didn't play any of those. I only played the one that I had on PS3. Um, but with that said, I do enjoy the fact that I, I, lo- I love that it's on Switch. And I, I don't know. I feel like it's it's probably a game that is better played portably. Like, it was probably better built. I mean, I say that knowing that I played it on PS3, and when I played it on PS3, I never had a problem with it. But yeah, when I played PS3, I'm talking 10 years ago, I had completely different gaming habits. Right. This isn't a game, like, the, for example, I would say that I like Valkyria Chronicles. The remastered version came out on PS4, like, two years ago, and I never bought it. You know, even though I liked it, I never bought it, because I probably was never going to sit on my PS4 and play it again. Yeah. But on Switch, I totally will. <laughs> um, but I do enjoy um, getting back to the characters I really do enjoy that you've got all these characters to manage if you use certain characters in your party a lot you'll start unlocking side chapters that you can go and then they have like their own little stories that they tell and it might be backstory it might be like a relationship with other characters and it may just be completely like dumb like I had this one where this guy was just like losing his mind and totally upset and he like he, he lost the bet and he owed money so this girl totally like invites him into her tent and tries to get him to, like, sell his organs, like, as, like, a huge joke, but, like, totally <laughs> sells it. Like, has another guy come in, and like, oh, yeah, totally. You know, we'll get a kidney out of you. And, like, she tries to tie him down and everything. He freaks out and runs away. Just funny stuff like that. Th- that was not the direction I was expecting that story <laughs> See, to go. there's a funny stuff like that, and then it gets, like, real serious warfare. Um, do you know anything about Valky- Valkyria Chronicles at all? Absolutely nothing. It's basically World War II. Like, you fight on this continent called Europa. You know, they're not trying real hard. And uh, there's, like, this very British, like, green-blue military side, and then there's very black-red evil side. Mm. See where it's going there? You know, in this, like, east-west conflict. Uh, <laughs> it sounds, um, this familiar. sounds oddly familiar. There you go. Hmm. I can't um, put my finger on it, though. But, the, but I will say, some of the cutscenes and some of the, the stages that they set up, again, only through Chapter 5, even early on, are very epic. You'll see some of these cutscenes, dude, where you see, like, this Lord of the Rings army that like spans the horizon. There's like 60 tanks and 5,000 people. And you're like, geez, when you say Lord of the Rings army, I'm sorry. I just picture how awesome will fire emblem hopefully be. Do you fire emblem? <laughs> yes. So, and that's, so I played the demo, um, because I used to, I played Valkyria Chronicles before I remember liking it. So I played the demo and I remember I came on Shaq and told everybody I love the demo. All that I love for the demo, that. all the love for the demo has totally come over to me actually owning the game. So much, in fact, that through five chapters, even though I'm totally about to put it down and play a lot of Red Dead, um, I'm probably going to try to pick up some of that premiere edition on eBay anyway. I kind of want that art book. I don't know if I need the tank because it's, like, really small and stuff, but I kind of want the art book. Because your your character Claude in the game, he jots stuff down in his diary, and the art book for the game is built like his diary, and I, I read that there's, like, some character stuff and some background and stuff in the art book as okay. well. So I kind of want the art book. So if anybody out there bought it, they don't want the art book, uh, tweet at me. <laughs> somebody come hit me up in Discord. I'd, I'd give you some money for it. Um, so I, I might look into that. And, uh, yeah, man, I just I really, really like it. It's beautiful. Um, I like these kind of tactics games. I always have. There's a tactics game that I played on my 3DS that was not as good, but I still played it like 15 hours. I, I kind of like these <sighs> games. And I would say if you like, if you like Fire Emblem, if you're waiting for Fire Emblem, I mean, in my mind, I'm trying to remember if there's anything I'm forgetting, Fire Emblem was probably my most anticipated game for next year. I feel pretty good in that. Like, I'll play way more Fire Emblem than Animal Crossing. Um, just to Ooh. put, like, your fandoms in perspective. Like, Fire Emblem's more my thing. If you're any way like that, then uh, I definitely think you should give Valkyria Chronicles a try. Play the old one, um, but I would say play the new one. I feel like I'm liking the new one a lot more than I like the old one. Like, I remember okay. liking the old one, but I want to say, like, back then I was like, I like this, but it's not Fire Emblem. You know, like, I like it, but not as much. This one, actually, I kind of would say it's, like, on par with not, maybe not Fates, but maybe Echoes. Like, Fire okay. Emblem Echoes and Valkyria Chronicles 4, those are, like, very similar in terms of quality and content, in my opinion. Okay. And there's a ton left to play. <laughs> nice. That's I, good. I got, you get your I money's got, worth. That's always nice. Oh, I, I mean, and Justin hooked me up. I think he paid... But so he bought it brand new. So he paid sixty dollars and maybe got GC or whatnot, and uh, he played it for maybe a day or two. And he was like, "I'm going to trade this back in." Trading credit was like eighteen dollars. 
Ooh. And I was like, I will totally give you more money than that for that game. Yeah. And he, I think he, uh, I don't even remember, I think 27, I think is what we settled on, something like that. And I was like, absolutely. I mean, everybody wins. He gets more money than what he would have, and you get a game. So I, mean, I was going to buy the game on Black Friday regardless. I had no idea yeah. when I was going to play it, but this was one that I was going to play on Black Friday, and I'm glad I got to it um, when I did. I'm glad I get to talk about it, but uh, this is one I'm going to keep playing. This is definitely, so like, this is definitely... I was telling this to Kaboski in the chat. He's been asking about it. This is definitely the wife wants to watch TV, so Donnie's going to sit next to wife and play something while watching TV. This is that game, and I love those games because you don't have to watch a cutscene to stay up on the story. I like that you click through the dialogue because you can take breaks. You know, like you can look up, watch a scene, look back down, kind of fast forward a little bit. You know that yep. type of stuff. And then uh, you know the the turn based stuff. It's really easy to pick up and play. You can play it on a lunch break because you can make two or three moves and look around the battlefield and put it down for 30 minutes, an hour, three hours, and come back, pick right back up where you left off. That's kind of how I'm playing it. Okay. So, yeah, um, I really enjoy that. And then um, hooking up Brendan Myers, which I knew I knew his name last week when Caroline shouted him out as the winner gamer. But for some other reason, I was going to say Brandon, and I knew it was wrong. And I was uh, like, I can't, uh. I can't say the guy's name wrong. <laughs> So I kept calling him the winner gamer anyway. Um, so I got these beautiful headphones, by the way, Jason. You see these these Zelda, yeah, yeah, these these Zelda, Zelda headphones? Yeah. And uh, they came with, like, the Splatoon cable. They came with the cable that goes into the headphones that's got, like, the other cable that can go into your yeah. phone, you know, and that type of stuff. So when I was posting pictures of the, of the headphones, he had mentioned, he's like, man, I've been wanting one of those cables. And I was like, you should totally be able to buy. It's just like a splitter. You should be able to buy one of these somewhere. And he was like, no, I can't. Yeah. And then, I don't know why you can't. Why can't you? you that's, know, that's, that's a thing. good question. You think it's like a, I would think that's like a standard audio cable. But I don't know. Um, but Bobby was asking me questions about it. And then he popped up again. He's like, man, I'd really like that cable. I was like, do you, do you just want my cable? And he's like, are you serious? I was like, dude, I'm never going to use this cable. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm not going to use it for my phone. That's I have dumb. Discord. Like, I'm not going to do this. This is never going to yeah. happen. I'm never going to open that app again. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, they've got to do something. And not, I'm not trying to say the app is bad. I'm just saying they've no. got to do something big to get me. I mean, to give I, I was watching. There's this really cool video that um, Callow shared on the Flux Discord a few weeks ago. And it was an uh, interview with Reggie at Geek Summit which is somewhere at Washington. It's like a 30-minute interview and sit down and they talk. One of the questions is talking about that app and why they chose to do that. And, like, listening to him talk about I get why Nintendo chose to do that. I get that. that. Yeah, I'm with you. you know, I, get I, under why. I understand why, but I'm still, like... I, I also understand, Jason, Washington. that we, from our point of view and our perspective, are probably 5% of the people that they're aiming that app for. Exactly. You know, so like nobody listening to this show should demean or think less of the app. But we're podcasters. We stream. We have Discord and OBS. We do this. This is what we do. So the idea yeah. that we would stop doing this to go pull up on our phone for what we think is less quality is never going to happen. So anyway, he hooked Caroline up with the Xenoblade thing, right? The Xenoblade controller. I'm not sure yep. if you didn't listen. He hooked her up with the Xenoblade controller. Oh, nice. So I told him, I was like, dude, I'd love to hook you up with this. I was like, how about this? How about you throw me a $10 gift card and I'll pay for the shipping on your way out? You know, because I want to like PayPal me for the shipping and whatnot. I was like, how about we just do that? And he was like, dude, I'd love to do that. So I sent him the cord. So I hope it works out for him. I can't wait to hear back from him. Yeah. Um, I, I don't get why that, I, I just don't get why that's a thing. Especially like, has, like nobody wants the, the squid dongle. That's just an ugly, Oh, the Zelda thing, thing that came with this was way but that was that was dongle. like what the pictures you shared, that was, that's slick looking. It looks like a piece of, it, it was looks minimal. Like nice, I mean, it's yeah. minimal. It's just a nice looking cable. I don't understand. I think a lot of the problems is like, we, I've always tried to look for a solution at work for instance, for training purposes. We very heavy phone users in our, our, our line of work. So we always look for, to get a new employee up to speed for them to listen in to another employee while they're doing negotiations and talking to carriers on the phone. But there's nothing that I can, it's so difficult to find anything that will allow the A has to be like the two and a half millimeter and then have the proper mic jacks. You can get stuff that just says audio, but then stuff that actually has the bands for a microphone as well. It's really messy. So I think that's probably part of the problems you got to have. You know, you have to have the, the audio band, you have to have the microphone band, and then you have to have the correct band to go into phone and everything. And it's just like, ugh. Sure. And the, the, to get out of this, because we've been talking, I talked about Valkyria way too long, apparently. 
I looked at our time. I was like, wow, it's way too much Valkyrie. <laughs> um, uh, I, I played Outlast 2, which I grabbed. It's on sale. And um, the only thing that I'll say about it, because I haven't played much, that just the first opening area, that game looks way better on Switch than I ever had any anticipation of it. To be quite honest with you, I think side-by-side comparisons would look really good. Like, it's a realistic game, so I, I was expecting a downgrade. Um, but it looks great. It looks great on Switch. Probably the best realistic game I've seen on Switch from, like, a okay. real, you know, trying wow. to render okay. real people. Yeah, I mean, it looks great. So. All I know of Outlast is a long time ago, Lucas was streaming it, and it was fun to watch him be like, get scared. <laughs> <laughs> Outlast, I played Outlast, I believe, the day I brought my PlayStation 4 home. I think it was, uh, like, a launch game or, like, mm. one of the games you could get, and I think I played it that day. I think. Okay. Maybe I'm way off in that, but I remember coming home playing with a friend of mine. Um, so I might, maybe I just played it the day it launched, but it was it was awesome. I, I have to share this, unrelated. Um, I need to get the videos up, but my son dances to the Super Mario theme. Like, I could just turn it on at any point, and he'll start dancing. He just starts. That's yeah. awesome. He dances with it. Yeah, he, man. And all he knows of it is, like, one day I just started humming, like, singing it to him, and he was, like, dancing to it. So every time I play it. Dude, you have to record that. He does we have it. to and see then, that. And then, well, I've got one with him, but he's covered in... Um, pasta sauce today and he starts dancing and then he's like man eh, more pasta ah. but uh, and he'll and after it ends he asks for us to 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 have alexa play it again it's hilarious that's cool <laughs> caroline you're right outlast was announced from live and run games to get an awesome collector's edition with all the different scary spooky stuff but uh yeah jason let's get into the news man yeah well look now that uh we can move on from valkyria chronicles cast we will <laughs> I kid, I kid. Yeah, we had some appropriate news for me being on the show. We got some Smash rumors. Yeah, some we do. Leaks, supposedly, that dropped this week. <laughs> um, new characters rumored to be appearing in. This is coming from what? It was a French. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a French leaker that. It was had... somebody that posted. I'm going to try to recount this from memory. Somebody posted a picture of like a wristband. Yeah. And it was it was rumored or not even rumored, almost like somewhat proven that the, the person that posted the wristband worked at a marketing company yeah. who has done marketing work before with Bandai Namco. Yeah, that's to say this is tied to Namco somehow. Who also was doing marketing on like the Grinch movie that's coming and the yep, Grinch stuff is in the photo, which was leading to some credibility. They also at one point verified that the person that they were tracing worked at the company. I have seen, however, that the company has walked it back. They came out with, I believe, earlier this morning. They said he doesn't work here and hasn't worked here for like a year. So now there are people thinking maybe that somebody's impersonating the person. Yeah, dude, the the lengths people go to. Oh, it's terrifying. Like stuff, it's it's insane, isn't it's it? It's terrifying. Um, Wait so, for people to show up at this guy's house and be like, "Juicy Smash." <laughs> yeah. So he he's leaking that uh, so that we have new characters coming. Uh, I'm just gonna run them down: Shadow from Sonic, Banjo Kazooie. Isaac from Golden Sun, Ken, which I believe Ken has pretty much been. I've seen other th- things of Ken that I think that could be very likely. Just is that it's an easy Echo Fighter yeah. of Ryu. I mean, that seems like a no brainer. Mock Rider, Gino, and Mach Chorus Rider. Kids. Um, I don't even, you know, this is just an insane number of characters to just continue to add. There's I mean, even stuff about that too. Because I was seeing, um, I, I know I'm, I'm gonna miss. I should have, guys. I came not, home late. I should have like looked all this, this up. game handheld at this point because the character select screen is gonna have to be crunched down so much to fit everything on screen. There was somebody I was showing uh, on Reset Era where they were talking about it. At some point in time, I think somebody said that it was supposed. To, there was 103 stages, but there was marketing material that promoted like 108. So, like, if you count these, like, two as Echo Fighters and the other one's actually gets to 108. So, there are people, like, drawing that comparison. Um, the the rumor's really getting weight because the wristband that they have is, like, the Smash wallpaper art that we're seeing that they keep adding characters to. And, and just, remember, just remember, I said that there was going to be a female Link. So, in Breath of the Wild. That's, that's true. It's true. Um with that, with that artwork, while I mean, there are definitely artists that are capable of doing things. We thought the NX was like a prototype at one point. Um, this artwork would be pretty hard to rip off like this. Well, it, like if if it is completely fake, they did a really really yeah. bang up job because 
to move the vectors around but keep the poses because they all overlap and stuff off each other. To do that really well, like the leak reportedly does, is really high art. You know, that's like some good yeah. stuff. Somebody did a lot of effort yeah. doing that. I mean, are you? Do any of these characters like interest you? The chorus kids. Ta-da. The chorus kids. The chorus I'm totally kids. excited about. Um, I don't know why the main characters from Rhythm Heaven wouldn't come over, but as a Rhythm Heaven fan, I would say, or at least uh, somebody uh, I don't know, a vocal supporter, um, the chorus kids are hilarious. And uh, I, I want I want to continue to see Isaac not included because I know that's like that's like the one of the fans are like oh we're gonna have Isaac I'm like I, I never played I don't yeah I never played Golden Sun so I don't know what the appeal is of why Isaac's so great. Um, Lock like, Rider? Of, you know, what? I'd rather have the I'd rather have the excite bike guy. I'd rather side. not. <laughs> How about that? I'd just rather not. Like I feel like that demeans. And Ted in the chat, I feel so bad because Ted's like Lock Rider. I don't know, man. <laughs> no. Sorry, buddy. Um, Banjo Kazooie would be sweet. Banjo Kazooie is the that I mean obviously that, we skipped that, over like the that. That would be yeah, huge because be it's huge. not a property owned by Nintendo. It's a property yeah. owned by Microsoft. They sold Rare. Like, we all know the history there. For them to come out and, and, and leading more credibility to that is Microsoft's about to hit the stage in about two weeks. Yeah. So if we're expecting some direct and maybe, if, like, if yeah. this is true, like, this might be something that Microsoft announces. You know, like, they could even do that, which blows my mind that Nintendo would want to do that. I mean, I, yeah. I talked to Jacob Rush about this uh, after dinner that night. He so wants this to happen. He loves Banjo. He loves Rare. They can do no wrong. They're amazing. He can't wait. wait he already got King K. Rule. He gets nothing else. So, All right. He already it, got that. My only defense is I don't see why Nintendo does this. And he goes, well, then they're exciting their fans. I'm like, you're already excited. <laughs> like, you're getting it anyway. It's not like there's yeah. nobody that's like, nope, no Banjo, no buy. Like, that's not a thing, I don't think. <laughs> Um, but at the Wait, same time, sorry, me, I'm actually going to cancel my pre-order. You just brought up a good point. I don't need it. <laughs> at the same time, it's like doing this really, I mean, I, I think it helps Nintendo. I definitely think it would create excitement and buzz for the game. Don't get me wrong. But including Banjo and Smash, I think only helps Microsoft really in the end. When you're talking about a net weight, who yeah. really benefits from this? Microsoft gets all this amazing PR they get all of this amazing everything. Like, I'd have to think if that's the case, there's got to be something for Nintendo on the other end that we don't know about. There's got to be a game or something. Maybe it's the Minecraft thing. You know, like, they're still supporting Minecraft. They're doing the Fortnite thing. Like, maybe they continue to play nice, and maybe this is, like, a, a good gesture. But I would say, like, maybe, like, Rare Replay or uh, maybe a port mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, like an old Rare game comes up on Virtual Console. Battle maybe they Toads. put Banjo or Battletoads on Switch. There's got to be something like that. Or it's like, why? Why are you – I mean, at the end of the day, they are direct competitors. Right. Why would you right. give your direct competitors so much amazing publicity? Because um, yeah, that—that's that's what point. it would be. It just why? Uh, I I just find that a little skeptical. I'm not saying it's not happening. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying I wouldn't like it. I'm just saying I find it from a corporate culture person. There are people in these companies that don't even play games. <laughs> you know, like they don't even care. Like they treat us as just customers. They don't even care as long as we pay money. There's right. I'm thinking about them. There's people in these boardrooms. I know there's people in boardrooms at Nintendo going, why would we do that? <laughs> that doesn't help our stock. It doesn't help our stockholders. Why would we do that for them? Right. And, so, and since she can't be here, we had Carol share her thoughts with us on Discord so we could share them with all of you here on the podcast. And Carol's thoughts are as follows on the Smash leaks, in quotations. I think it's legit just based on the amount of effort that was done into figuring out which additions were made and what the characters actually were from that that tiny resolution of a photo. You all can say that the fake reason I'm not here is because a new MMO called Maple Story 2 has come and it's taken her hostage. There you go. Make sure you just didn't read off the teleprompter. Yeah, make sure I didn't just read that. Well, you know, Ron, I'm much like Ron Burgundy. I will read everything that is put in front of me. Um, Yeah, and Shadow. 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 Would that do anything for anybody? No, I'd much rather... I'd take take Tails over Shadow. I would too. I would too. I, I would agree with that. I, 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 honestly, I I'd really Knuckles. like Knuckles. Knuckles is awesome, but he's a trophy. Yeah. And then, then it kind of like kills everything. Much like, you know, I would love love Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight's in every game now, apparently. He's in all these other fighting games, and then he's just an assist trophy in Smash, you know. But whatever. The chorus kids are like just oddly weird enough. That's, I don't even. That uh, see I, that? I could see them as being a, an assist trophy. So could I. You know? But I would, I'm, I'm intrigued by the idea of what that character plays like because there's three of them. You know, is it like a Pokemon character type thing? Like, I'm intrigued. Like, I'm intrigued to know, like, how the chorus... Because they're like, they have this monochrome style. 
and they're kind of rabid like like in in mm. in tone you know like they're just kind of obnoxious and loud and, and you know yeah jibber jabbery so i that's that's cool plus i kind of i i was thinking when this was when i first found this rumor and i posted this like i would bet that sakurai is a rhythm heaven fan i for some other reason that fits for me i think he'd probably like that game and um I still, I mean, I'd rather have a rhythm heaven stage. So mm. if they get a, if they, you know, if they get a character in, like hopefully they get a stage because I think a rhythm heaven stage of Dunwell could be amazing. Yeah. So um, we're gonna kind of quick hit the next the, the, the news because I want to make sure we have time to get to our direct from you questions. Uh, there's rumors that Sega is talking about bringing Dreamcast games to the Switch. It's not Donnie rumors, really. They like uh, they're, they're. I guess it's it's talk. I guess yeah. Rumor is the the best way, not the best way to phrase that. Yeah, their press basically about, said that they yeah. they have it running, and he he more or less said we're looking at whether or not we should release these via emulation, which apparently, assuming is like close to being done or here now, or should we remake some games and bring them that way? I don't, you know, I have really fond memories of the Dreamcast. You know, I. Uh, I like Dreamcast. Uh, I had some great times playing Dreamcast, but I'll, I'll be honest, it's gonna be it's gonna be like the NES Classic or the Super NES Classic for me. I'm not gonna. I'd play it once and never probably go back to it. And I can't think of like games that there's not too many games on Dreamcast. Like what I played the most on Dreamcast, honestly, was NFL 2K. We played a ton of NFL 2K on Dreamcast because that game was the bomb, you know. But I just. I know there's a lot of there's some psychic people that I think this is great and I I think it's a cool thing too but I don't well know. Serge asked you know whether or not we just think it's like are we excited about this or is this just nostalgia I mean to answer that question I, I think it's just a nostalgia play I think yeah you know um, I would be excited about this if it was like a lot of Dreamcast games but we know it's just going to be Sega ones you yeah know, it's not going to be you know any of like the shooters or any of the sports yeah. games or anything licensed or anything like that and is it going to be like the Neo Geo stuff where we're buying one game at a time? I think so, that these collection. would release as like Sega Ages no. and you would yeah. get them one at a time. Now, the moment this rumor was announced, what did I say in, in Discord? Jet Set, man. I would totally be down to play Jet I've Set I've never radio. played a Jet Set Radio. That's a really so good game. That would that'd be cool to check out. There's some games that I would I would play I want, Sonic I Adventure. Play the, I want to play that, uh, what's that, the dancing one, the, the, the space station thing where the... I don't remember what it's called. Oh God, I got to think of it now. Okay, I would play Sonic Adventure just just because. I don't know if I'd beat it or anything. I'd totally buy it and play it and mess around with it just like I used to. I was one of those folks, you know, that grabbed a Dreamcast when it was super cheap and dead yeah. and all that and there messed around with games. Ted Ted's got me Space Channel Five. That's oh, a, I have no idea what, what type of game it even is. I just know I just know of it. I would play Res, which is a Sega game. Mm. Um, I would play Res again. I would play, um, what was the other one? I posted in Discord, is it? Uh, House of the Dead, that was my pick, would be awesome, but I just don't know. So there's so many Capcom games and and like Konami games and things that we would never get, I would imagine. Maybe they would. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they would work out a deal. I don't think so. And and Power Stone. Power Stone would be my other I never played Power Stone. Ever. It's a good party game. Um... So outside of that, oh, Shinmu, right? That's the one that everybody. Yeah. Uh, no. Nah, no. No desire in Shinmu. I mean, I just think, I. I it, yeah, you got new Shinmu coming. I'd, I'd play that maybe, but I don't. Want, I don't need to play old Shinmu. Nah. I would no. play Headhunter, just because, because I messed with it back in the day. It's not like super great, but it was like it's supposed to be like this, you know, Tom Clancy Metal Gear type thing, like. I don't know, oh, is that the one you like pictured that. that was like Rico Suave Solid Snake? Kind he's of. All like, he yeah. looks just like Snake, but he's like sexier. That's exactly what he was supposed to be. <laughs> like yeah. it was like this whole thing. I, I I might mess around with. You know, these are types of games that I might mess around with. You know, you throw them at me for eight bucks, I pop on Sonic or something like that. But am I going to sit down and get real excited and play a Dreamcast game from start to finish? No, no, I'm not. No, no. Maybe Virtua Tennis. I'd play Virtua Tennis. Ooh. That's a good one. What's it? There's a car game that Sega made on Dreamcast that I remember playing. That was like a, uh, a Turismo Daytona type USA. thing. That's one. No, but like I think it's like Sega Racing, Sega 3D. Sega, I'll just wait for Sega Ted to cars. answer for us again. Something like that. I think <laughs> they would do. So I, I, you know, I don't know. I might mess around with something like that. Carol said we forgot a <clears throat> some Xeno leak 
thing in the Smash thing too. Whatever it costs, Moss. I have, I I don't speak. Oh, to you, so she's a blade. To... Um, I didn't see that in the rumor, so that's why we. I guess we missed it, or I don't know. I don't. I don't recall seeing that one. But yeah, she's a blade and a blade. I think Caroline's just like secretly trying to insert. I think she's saying if you know, she's thinking if she says it enough. That Xenoblade like will get in Smash, you know, like she's Rex is gonna be there, Rex and Pyra, and then it was Pyra and Mithra. And now she's going to the other blades. Like I'm not sure we're gonna get it, but um, no more Xenoblade, no more. <laughs> Xenoblade's amazing, no more. man. It's a really good game. Uh, chapter one was enough for me. That's all I gave it. <laughs> Got your fill. It's just I guess you know, like what we went back to talked about, like you, you discussed in in your Valkyria stuff. It's just like I can't. I, I, I just that the Japan anime stuff doesn't. It doesn't doesn't do it for me, you know. Just doesn't do it. To you. Uh, Pokemon Go is adding Adventure Sync. Yeah, so this is um, an interesting thing that I think a lot of Pokemon Go fans will like, and it'll probably be something that I'll do whenever I get my Pokeball thing, and, and like maybe I try it again. So you can run it in the background of your phone. That, like that's like the thing, right? So that's the big deal with this story. It'll keep track of your steps, will let you hatch eggs, and like let you collect candy. So basically, you can like turn on the feature and you can play Pokemon Go when you're not doing anything. You're just walking around. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice that is thing. nice. So like with well, that improvement, right? and the Pokeball Plus thing, where you can catch Pokemon without looking at your phone, just pressing a button. Between yeah. those two things, I will play Pokemon Go way more than I'm currently yeah, playing all the time. It. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So that's why I put that in here. So there you go. Uh, yeah. Civ Six is coming November 16th. It's been confirmed. It's going to have some touch controls. Yeah, as well. I'm excited for I've that. Never, I, I think. Um, I think that's a good get. I think it's going to be fun to play on the Switch. Uh, I don't have the budget for any more games this year, so I won't be getting it. But uh, I think it'll be cool. Yeah. Sega GT. I think that might be right, Ted. And Caroline says that, uh, yeah, she's the main character in Xeno Saga, which I don't have any history with. So apparently she That's thinks, why it's a big deal. I guess. If she says so, I'm not going to argue with her. <laughs> so. Good point. Um, I do uh, think it's interesting that Civ's dropping the same day as Pokemon. I'm ooh. not saying that either one of those two are like cannibalizing each other, but it's like, no. why wouldn't you come out the week before or the week after? Yeah, you're gonna yeah. lose any like immediate buzz or mar- yeah. like discover with Pokemon. Why would you do that? Why? It makes no sense to me. Why? Just do it like the week before, or the week after. Why the same day? <sighs> Are you hoping so? Like my, in my mind, I was thinking maybe there's a hope with them because they already know their niche thing, right? Maybe there's a hope with them that they go, well, people are going to go to the stores and people are going to load the eShop. So if we just put our icon right next to it, maybe <laughs> somebody thinks about us that wouldn't have. That's the best I, theory I could come up with. But I don't know. I yeah. I don't know. How about this? Are you upset, Team Sonic? It's getting delayed until 2019. Oh, I hope when they come back, they've mentioned something about boats and planes because. Like this whole we're a racing game again, I am not into. That, I want that's Team it, Sonic it, to be my Diddy Kong racing game. Is that a I, I I'm very not familiar with the franchise. Is that a port? No. Then nope. uh, this new, new Team game, Sonic new Racing game? is a brand okay. new game. Okay, then I'm a little more forgiving because first I was like I thought it was just a port of an old one. I was like, okay. So the why port is... of the old one comes from the fact that they made the last one that was on everything. It was oh. on Wii U, it was on PS3, it was on 3DS, it was on Vita, it was on Xbox, it was on everything. So they ported their last one, I don't even remember what it's called, Sonic Racing Adventures or something like that. Um, but with that one, it had boats and planes. So all the characters boats would transfer, planes. they would boats go from... And planes, so I you would get me my boats and planes. You would race a lap, and then you would fly a lap, or you would boat a lap. It had a Diddy Kong racing feel. We loved it. And this one has not been any of that. Just been strictly I think, kart I think, racing. I think, it, I think it needs to go that right because if you're a kart racer, don't even go to the Switch because you can't touch Mario Kart. Nickelodeon, Sonic All-Stars get Transform. Out, get out of here. Thank get you. out of here, Nickelodeon. Thanks, Ted. You can't do it. That's the you name of the game. It. We bought that game on Wii U, played it a ton. I bought it on 3DS. That's how much we enjoyed it. We bought it again. Sonic Racing's Transform was a good game. It was a good racer because it was different than Mario Kart. This is like, hey, we're Sonic, we're making Mario Kart. It's like, yeah, who that's, wants that's, that? Nobody wants that game. Dumb, dumb. <laughs> Don't do that. So Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, Vampire. Vampire is coming to the Switch. It's a vampiric adventure game. So that game is from Don't Nod. These are the people that make Life is Strange. Oh. Now, it's not yeah. a Life is Strange game, though. It's not like a, a telltale narrative adventure. This is like an like an action adventure. You walk around and investigate and do action and stuff like that. I never really tried it 
or thought about trying it because I remember like the review cycle wasn't like super, you know, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't, they were getting like sixes and sevens, not like nines and tens. So I wasn't really paying attention to it. Also, I believe this game came bef- either before I knew who Don't Nod was or before Don't Nod, I think, had like some Life okay. is Strange, you know, awareness with their name. So um, that's the only thing that I picked up from the news release. I was like, oh, Don't Nod made that game. I didn't even know that they made that game. So, uh, but it, but I would say this, it's a realistic, like action adventure type game. And we don't have a whole lot of those on switch. So the fact that it's coming to yeah. switch, we have no idea. They didn't release a date. I'd imagine next year sometime, but the the fact that it's coming, I think is worth, you know, if you haven't paid any attention to it at all, maybe, you know, paying a little looking at it, maybe it might be for you. Um, I still don't, don't think not, it's for me. Don't nod off on this one. There you go. There you go. You see what I did there, Donnie? Yeah, I do. I I, those things, I yeah, put it together. I got it. it. Saw it. Yeah. Good job. It. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Trine 4 <clears throat> has been announced coming in 2019. It's coming to everything, including the Switch. Sure. I would expect it to. I love Trine. Um, really like Trine 2. I've played Trine for like a combined total of like an hour. But, I mean, it's, okay. a, cool, it's a cool game. The problem with Trine, or at least Shaq's problem with Trine, Trine's best played with friends. Yep. And I played Trine 3 with a companion online, I think, online. And, uh, yeah, online. My friend Drew bought a Wii U, and we played Trine together, and it was freaking awesome. And I played Trine 2 by myself. Now, that sucked. No, no, I still liked it. The thing that oh. I liked about Trine, Trine Trine 3, it was beautiful. Beautiful-looking game. I hope they stick to that. I hope they really want to give us a beautiful-looking indie game. I'm talking that's not like unre- that's, stylistically that's un- beautiful. Unreal, right? Unreal Engine. Ooh, that's a that's a question. I don't know. I think it is. But Trine was gorgeous. Trine three was really pretty, like way pretty. I mean, it was a looker on Wii U of all things. It was like this game looks amazing. So I hope they stick with that. If they stick with that and they stick with the gameplay, if I can get Jason or Lucas to play with me, hopefully better than we did Overcooked. You know, dude, Lucas and I were the bomb at Overcooked too. Without us, without me and Caroline oh, messing it up the we, kitchen, we were right, dude. I. I will play. I will play with two people. I will play with three people. I just want to keep playing Overcooked. I have so much fun with Overcooked too. So, so the thing, fun. the thing about Trine for me will be when is it coming? You know, they're saying 2019. What's it dropping into? If Trine drops while I'm playing Fire, Fire Emblem, you guys are done. <laughs> There's not a chance. But if it drops in a window, or if it's always on sale in a window that we want to play together, I'm totally down to buy Trine and I don't know, play for a couple weekends with you guys because I like Trine. Um, it's it's going like, to be so. It's going to it's going to be your 2018 Diablo. <laughs> Maybe. Dude, Diablo. Because I mean, that, that's the game. I'm, I'm surprised you're still buying it because I don't know when you're going to play that. I have no really? idea. I'm not going to play it anytime soon. I'm not going to play it. See, here's so, why, the... so, so, so why are you buying it? <clears throat> you know why? Because I didn't pay anything for it. I used okay. a complete well. Best Buy gift card for it. Because well, eventually you can, you can when you hit... Best Buy gift card on something else. But No, no. Here's the thing. When you hit Best Buy gift card limits, they issue that $25 that you have to spend on uh, a deadline. Okay. So I use that and a trade-in that I got to buy Diablo. Okay. So it's now, just sitting now, there. Okay. Yeah, it's just okay. sitting there for me. And I was like, well, I mean, I could cancel it and they would give it back to me, but I'd have to use it like almost immediately. Donnie's giving away the first <clears throat> physical game on Shaq. <laughs> no, I'm not giving away Diablo. I will play Diablo. It's just not going to be anytime soon because I've got Dude. I've got Red Dead. Like Red Dead drops tonight and I'm going to play it all weekend long and I'm going to play it for two and a half weeks. I'm going to play Red Dead. And the yeah. moment Pokemon comes... I will stop playing Red Dead and play Pokemon, and then I'm hoping I can beat Red Dead by then. Not a chance. It's like a 75-hour game. <laughs> There's no chance. Yeah. So my uh, what you then playing on Shaq is going to be a little weak for a while, yeah. at least yeah. until Pokemon comes, because I ain't playing anything until I get well, then, Red Dead. And then Dead. once you get to Pokemon, that's going to carry you until... I mean, you're not gonna, I mean, you're going to play Smash, but you're not going to be I'm not like, going to be like you guys. Smash, yeah. So once I get done with Pokemon, I'll go back to Red Dead. Before I can really do anything else, then I'll start doing Smash and Diablo. Yeah, then you could, yeah, because I, I think Diablo is going to be my Smash uh, palette cleanser. Like, you know, okay, I need to play something different. You can play Diablo. And, I think and they're both multiplayer. Diablo. They're both multiplayer, so they'll carry over. Well. You know, when I pick it up from the store, I'll boot it up that night and check it out. You know, I'll play a little bit. I'm, so my thing that I was kind of hoping for is maybe I play Diablo like on my lunch break. Maybe I can get into like some of that Valkyria mm. area. Well, especially for me. if. Well, especially if you get into the, I can't think of the name of the runs that you can do when the the, the later, like once you get a decent, decent level, you unlock the, I don't know, you remember what they're called, so I'm not even going to pretend to say it, but there's some more um, kind of like mission based, you know, more one and done, get in and out, get in with your friends and go kill all the stuff, get the loot and you're done, so which I think would cater well to 
um, a lunch break experience, you know? Yeah. Riff, and, uh, riff. So if I can do something like that, maybe I'll play it a little bit more, but I don't think there will be the day anytime soon where me, Surge, and you team up in Diablo. Oh, I'm, I'm never, I'm never playing any games with Surge ever. So. I just, it's, it's never going to happen, unfortunately, because of the t- his schedule, kids, and time zones. I'm never playing a game with Surge. It's just, I, it's just ha- not happening. Devin, it has to happen because I have to two stock him. He wants, he wants to be, be, he wants to be, he wants to bathe in the trials of fire, and, and, I, and be, teach Smash and learn Smash for the fun way. I'll play Smash with you that first week, that first weekend. You know, we'll stream, we'll have the fun. I'll probably play Smash with you uh, the weekend after. And then make maybe a few couple of days a month, every month after that. But you're going to play Smash like every day. I am definitely not. My son is more yeah. like you. We've talked about this. My son will yep. play Smash just indefinitely. That's why we got to get another yeah. Switch. Yeah. <laughs> because I'll never get the Switch back. Like to think like how I, well, I, I saw it briefly how I approached Brawl out. But yeah, I will play Smash. Like, and I didn't even, and like playing on the Wii U was on my TV upstairs and I played a decent a much decent amount of it. Now I have my own station down here. I'll stream it, and I'm I'm oh, I just when I get tunnel vision on a game, and then I like there's I want to get better at. Oh, it's gonna be. I fear for my 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 life. Uh, let's Donnie. We have some questions to hit up before we end the show tonight. So direct from you, please understand. Please understand. What do we got? Who we got some questions from? We need. All to right. Answer. So kaiju guy writes in. He's not a question. But I, I think it's worth, worth reading this. He goes, Starlink is a must-have for Switch owners. The game is not worth it on other systems. Fox is the main appeal, and if you, if, if you in any way like him, get the digital version of the game, never, the phys- never buy the physical. It's really like a Christmas gift-type game. So uh, people are liking that Starlink. I heard Luke Lore talking about you liking the Starlink. The people that are playing it, they like Starlink. I'd, I'd like Switch to hear some it. more of that non-Nintendo opinion on the game because I think, yeah, the Nintendo has that huge Star Fox selling point. Sure. I want to know how, what it's like for the, the PlayStation fans and the, the Xbox fans that get the all the Ks and the Teraflops on their – on their. we just get Foxes. They get Ks and Teraflops. Um, and I, I haven't really looked they, – they, kept touting the the uk sales numbers yeah but i never saw, i never saw like in north america how it sold I didn't see those either. Platforms. i'm really interested to see how it how it sells and i'm i have a feeling this switch will sell pretty well just because of star fox it's on the yeah. wish list for me for black friday so I yeah can i mean the christmas tree i'm not going to touch if, it until christmas no i mean if i see if there's like a great deal on it i'll i'll pull the trigger on it but i i do plan to own that game it's not something i can get from the library because <laughs> It needs those those physical parts. You don't need so it's them. Not be... You don't have to play with them. Yeah, but it really limits you. What I told. Yeah, I um... want to do that. So that I think the physical, like he, like Kaiju guy said, the physical is the best. I mean, digital, excuse me, is the best way to get that game. It was P Calico who was saying that, and he was asking, and what I told him was there in a, there is no amount of digital crap, digital ships and guns that you can get. I don't care how much of it is there and how easy it makes the game. Blah 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 blah. None of that can replace that sweet looking R wing sitting Dude, on the shelf. That's. That's 100% true. Yeah. Like, there's, for me, there's one strong reason to buy this game, and it's to have an R-Wing. <laughs> Speaking of which, like, if Nintendo made an R-Wing model kit that I could build... Sure. Oh, Why yeah. don't they have that? Why is that not a thing? Um, yeah, uh, I think, was it uh, uh, Nintendo Talk had a video talking about this game and Fox? This is I th- What I like that this game's done most of all is it's kind of brought Star Fox out of a negative light that we had definitely cleanse the palate a little bit from zero. And now we're <laughs> talking pa- positively about uh, Fox McCloud. I think the fans are very excited about what, you know, Star Fox, we got smash coming up again, which is going to highlight Fox McCloud. I think that uh, this really sets the stage of what I think where that series needs to go. I think the rail shooter of Star Fox that has to be done. I think if you took, if you combine what Starlink offers you with open world awesome- adventure, Open world adventure with the, the cool bosses that Star Fox has always had. The wingmen. You give me some drop in, drop out multiplayer. When some one of my friends can just hop on and take control of Slippy or Falco and play with that's me. That's good. That would be sweet. That's good. That, that's a much bigger, grander scale. They've never yeah. invested into Star Fox like that. That's no. a big game. We've, we've just been telling the same story over and over again for the past how many hey, years? Hey, I know it was just a rumor. We've no. I mean, I'm down for this Star Fox racing. That rumor be fun. sounded. Awesome. That'd be fun. <laughs> I'm down I, that I, game I mean, at first I was like, "This sounds dumb," but now it's like that would be really fun. It sounds give amazing. It, give it to me now because I am buying the um, 
the physical version for my son for Christmas. I and then you can play it with your Labo flight stick. There you go. I do. I definitely looked at all of the reviews. It does look like if you're going to buy this game physically for the R wing, pick up another ship, at least one more ship. You got yeah. at least you got at least pick one more up because like apparently like they're used as like lives. Yeah. So like if you just die with the one, like you just got to start over. So yeah. buy at and least one more ship. Extra, extra pilots are nice too. I'm hoping that this game I'm like buy because it's a Ubisoft game, right? Black Friday, yep. like Assassin's Creed, to be thirty bucks. I'm uh, hoping I this think... game is half off at you, at you know on Black Friday, and I'm gonna spend eighty dollars on it, and I'm gonna get the game and like five ships and three pilots, and I'm gonna get like a whole bunch of stuff. That's what I'm hoping. That's a good idea. That's yeah. a good idea. What else we got? Uh, Seth wrote in with a really good one. Oh I like this boy! One. Oh boy! So there's Mario Kart and Super Smash Bros. What other kind of game would you like to see a mashup of Nintendo characters in, either multiplayer or single player? Pick the game. Who's in it? And what are they doing? I, this is always my answer every time. Mario Hockey. Give me Mario Hockey. So just any of the sports games? No, I want, I want just hockey. Just hockey. I want a hockey Mario sports game. I want what we got with like the with Strikers, but now it's going to be like Mario Slapshot or something like that, you know? Mario Cross Check. Sure. That's what I want. Sure. That's what I want. Um, I think the I think a really easy answer is all the sports games. Like Mario Golf with Link and everything would be freaking sweet. I'm I like that idea. Yeah, Hyrule course, but Hyrule I was, Field. I really thought like Splatoon. Like that was my first thought. I think you could pop Splatoon by adding a Mario or something in there. Um, but how would they <laughs> travel? Like how would you do the whole squid travel Dude, thing? It's video games. I mean, Come on, I've seen uh, much, much different, much, much easier, harder things to explain in video games. Um, that's what I was thinking. Like the sports uh, thing that you bring up is an easier fit. Mario Party could be like a Nintendo Party. Um, that's an easy one. That would be a lot of fun. How about um, we combine uh, Def Jam Vendetta with <laughs> with Mario Party, and you get like this Mario. <laughs> Mario Street Fighter, it's so like That's backyard so brawl, you know. <laughs> I was trying to think um, the other ones that I would think of for like nobody wants to hear. So I was thinking like maybe they they rev- you know like take a property like Brain Age or you know like one of their puzzle games, um, Puzzle and Dragon, like something like that could definitely like if they added all the characters in could get some appeal that like it may never have. But that's not what people want to hear. They want to hear big. Nintendo games. I definitely don't want Mario showing up in a Zelda game. I, you know, I don't want Mario showing up in a Star Fox game. I don't want, you know, them showing up in a Metroid game. Like, there's definitely like universes I want to keep separate. I don't want to just jump into the let's Nintendo everything Nintendo all the time. Yeah, I don't want that. Um, and I guess that would be kind of the thing that I would say with most of the sports games. I like that they kind of have like a natural rivalry with the Mario characters, the Koopa Kids, and things like that. Um, but that part- makes more sense than doing all the. Like the Smash roster and, and just throwing everything in a game and calling yeah. it, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, Nintendo Land, I'd be down for Nintendo Land too. We freaking love that game. <laughs> Waru 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 Plaza Simulator. I mean, WarioWare. How freaking great is WarioWare? And it's totally crazy and chaotic and wacky enough to support having different types of games for different yeah. franchises. Anything oh. that like it celebrates, you know, their type of stuff. Um, but I could totally see like a Splatoon type thing. Where, you know, maybe it's single player only, you know, like the Inklings, mm-hmm. like you could totally have like, I would totally be down for playing Mario levels as Splatoon characters shooting Goombas with Splatoon guns. Because they kind of almost already have that. You know, you think about like the single player levels in Splatoon. Oh, yeah. If yeah. you spun yeah. it with like some different colors and blocks that moved and you changed all the, the enemies to Goombas. And you just played some Mario music over that? That would be really awesome. I think a lot of people would think that would be really, really great. People would love that. I think it's just cool to see the the Mushroom Kingdom in different variants. Like what we saw, like much like we got to see with uh, Kingdom Battle. You yeah. Know, being yeah, able yeah, to explore yeah. the world in a different... Kingdom Battle! After that survey I took. Mario <laughs> Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Maybe it becomes a Nintendo Kingdom Battle. Because you could Dude. totally do like a universe type thing where you're swapping back and forth and stuff. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. I would how cool would it be? I know we didn't talk about doing the Smash treatment, but how sweet would it be to be Captain Falcon of that and just Falcon punch the heck out <laughs> of guys? You'd be like this melee character. He has a tie. Show me your moves, and they come at him, and then Falcon. Oh, especially that, that, that mention of that. I'm, I'm never going to come back. I'm going to say it again. That that 
rabid zombie horde mode? Mm. If you could be like Link, Captain Falcon, Fox, and Mario, dude, that'd be so much fun. I'd be down for that. That'd That'd be be fun. Good question, Seth. Our last one comes from Trash Turkey. I think I'm the only one that has much to say on this one. Any chance we get a Power Pros game in 2019? Jason, do you like Power Pros? Have you ever played Power Pros? Do you follow Power Pros? I had, I had to Google what it was. I had no idea what Power <laughs> Pros was. So this is, at first I was like, oh, is it a wrestling game? No. But no, I see it's baseball. Power Pros is an amazing baseball game that hasn't graced a Western audience since Power Pros Wii, I think. Maybe I like it, I like is it arcadey because I like arcadey. Baseball. Yes, it's totally okay, arcadey. Perfect. Um, it's totally arcadey. Uh, it's super fun. They is it used as good to, as Rusty's real deal. Way better. Perfect. <laughs> used to have the MLB license. Wow. It okay. still has the Japanese license, and to this day, it still releases on PlayStation Four and Vita in Japan. Like they just had wow. one that dropped this year. 2018, wow. Power Pros 2018. They had 2016, 2015. Um, goes back every year. Actually, I think this year's PlayStation 4 game in Japan has a PlayStation VR component. You can play the game in VR. So it's like these little Wii-like characters. Like, they're Miis. But they're baseball yeah. players, and they have, like, you know, yeah. Cleveland Indians get up. It's like little chip, little chippy baseball players with And that's it. It's, just, and... it's exactly what you think it is. They throw the ball, and you smash the ball out of the park, and it's super fun, and home runs and all the little animations and stuff. It's not like ML. It's not like Mario. You don't like the bat doesn't light on fire and you do 18 flips and beat the ball into space. <laughs> it doesn't do that. But, um, you know, it's, it's definitely, it's a more arcadey version of baseball than anything you've seen. Like, you know, MLB, the show, you know, it's yeah. definitely, it's like, it's that in between of something that's like totally watered down, but you know, like you can actually get the pitches and stuff. And I, okay, I really first, love Power Pros. First, we get an over-the-top arcadey wrestling game, and then we get Power Pros. I don't think we'll get Power Pros. Um, I think if we were going to get Power Pros, I think we would have seen it show up on PlayStation Four, considering they already have the game. I think it's a licensing thing. I just don't think they either mm. can afford or want to have the MLB license, and I don't think you can make that game without it. You can't release that game in the states without the Major League Baseball license. It's not going to sell. So uh, I don't think we get one, but Trash Turkey, you hit a chord with me because I freaking love Power Pros. Like I, ha- I may even still have that game on Wii, I think, in a box because we played a lot of MLB Power Pros. It's really fun. So I loved it. I like it. Yeah, that's it for us, man. That's it. It's all done. It's I feel like show. I just all I feel show. like I just got here. <laughs> Now, now, make sure you call out sick to uh, if we're in Nintendo. <laughs> so there's many times where I'm like, I could just go to bed, and I'm like, oh no, I got a podcast. With I, Sean. Made a, I made it. I made a joke bit. while you were on vacation, I think to Sean, that what we should do is we should start a tally like a war, right? So I get like these little numbers that flip, and we just have like a Jason counter. So like we flip, and like we got Jason for one week, and then they flip, and then we flip, and like whoever's winning. <laughs> oh God! Don't do that to me. Because unfortunately, due to the time slot, it's much easier for me to make. I know. Nintendo all the time. The time slot, due to Sean and Bobby being awesome, it's much easier for me to make Friday <laughs> nights work than uh, we know. We know. No, it's yeah. not the Friday night. It's that ten thirty because then the family's in bed. So I'm like, well, just gotta stay up and not and be tired tomorrow. I'm not gonna sleep anyway. All I gotta do, <laughs> yeah, just gotta be tired. So. That is going to do it for the Shack this week. Thank you so much for listening and watching. We appreciate it. We always stream this show live at twitch.tv slash PSVG. We encourage you to check out all the other new, other shows on the PSVG network and our brother and sister shows at Make Us Better. You can check us out on the Discord. And, hey, this has its own unique feed. If you want to get just the Nintendo Shack, that's an option. Search Nintendo Shack. You'll find it. Board with Video Games is ready to drop. It's there. It's ready. We're just waiting for iTunes to fix the crud yeah. because we don't know what's going on there. There's some weird hiccup on iTunes side where that show is not publishing like it should. And folks, really, just come back for more Nintendo Shack. You'll be glad you did. I'm Jason. I'm done. Donnie, get us out of here. Good night, Kooplings. <laughs>